Ground hornbill is a large bird, in fact the southern ground hornbill is the largest species of hornbill. They measure up to about 90 to 100 centimetres, so nearly a metre in height, and they weigh about 4,000 grams, which is about 8 pounds. So physically they're the largest of the hornbills. They have a predominantly black plumage, they do have white flight feathers, but one of the most striking characteristics is they have bare facial skin which in the male is bright red and in the female is red, but once she matures, she'll also have some blue coloration in there, which is one of the ways we can tell males from females in this species. Physically, they're the only hornbill which is really adapted to walking well. They have a special tendon that connects the pelvis to the femur, which allows them to have strides and walk, and even walk on their toes and even run at times. Most hornbills hop. These birds have much longer legs and they're adapted to be able to walk. And they're also pretty unique in their nesting habits. They're the only hornbill that doesn't seal itself into its nest and doesn't practice nest sanitation. All the time the female's in the nest, the male will actually collect new nesting material and bring it to her. They'll actually bundle together leaves, twigs, and at the same time food, and deliver it to the female as a bundle which combines food and nesting material. Ground hornbills are actually much more carnivorous than most hornbills. Most hornbills are omnivores. The ground hornbills um, almost exclusively eat meat. They will play with plants and occasionally consume some plant matter. The main part of their diet consists of anything they can capture, overcome and consume. And southern ground hornbills were formerly very widespread across much of the southern African continent. There's a lot of concern in recent years that the population has really dwindled. The IUCN, which categorizes categories of endangerment, formerly used to have southern ground hornbills as least concern, and then a few years ago were moved to vulnerable. More recently, the South African CITES Scientific Authority has actually recommended that these birds should really be categorized as endangered or even critically endangered. South Africa is one of the key countries in their home range and it's thought today that there's fewer than 500 family groups of southern ground hornbills remaining in South Africa. There is an active field conservation program for ground hornbills in southern Africa. The Mabula Ground Hornbill Conservation Project is active in several countries, particularly South Africa, where they're involved in a number of activities including conservation education, field research, um, and even they're involved in um, reinforcing the wild population by reintroducing some birds bred in captivity or um, eggs harvested from wild nests which are raised in captivity and then reintroduced back into the wild. The Virginia Zoo actually manages the SSP program for this species which is a species survival plan. I act as the coordinator for that program. Basically I maintain a stud book of all the birds in North American zoos. Um, we analyze the genetic base of the population and the demographics and we produce recommendations about which birds are the highest priority to breed, which birds we should move and make new pairs, um, and basically manage the population in a way that they're going to be sustainable and around for the next hundred years or so. One thing we found in the last few years since the SSP has really been looking at the behaviour of these birds more is just how important the extended family cooperative breeding system is and the amount of social learning that the juveniles do. Um, we used to think that once the juveniles were independent we could separate them, move them to new pairings. We're now learning it's much more important to keep the juveniles with the parents for as long as we can so they can observe the parents breeding in the future, participate in collecting nesting material um, and bringing that to the nest as well as food and really watch what the parents do. One of the things that helps maintain social organisation within Southern Ground Hornbills family groups is the way that they hold and present food. They use food for display, not only when you see them hunting will you see the male obviously catching food and consuming it. Very frequently you'll see particularly the male hold food in his beak. He uses it for display, he presents it to different family members and he'll eventually give it to a family member. The giving and withholding of the food is a huge part of what maintains social organisation within these family groups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.